All right, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about what we call kamas. A kama is a string of any length k. So, for example, if I have a DNA string, then I can count the kamas or calculate the kamas from this string. If I set k equal, let's say, to 3, then I've got a kama ATG, a kama TGA, a kama GAT, a kama ATT, a kama TTA, a kama TAC, ACT, CTA, TAT, ATT, TAG, and that's my end of my kamas. So why do I want to use kamas? There are several different reasons. So if I'm doing something like genome assembly, for example, as we already talked about, there's several ways that you can do genome assembly. One way is what's called overlap layout consensus, where you figure out the overlap between all of the reads, you lay them out into an order, and then you build a consensus. This is a really slow technique that doesn't scale well to many millions or billions of reads, but one of the ways you can make it scale a bit faster is by building the overlap based on came accounts. However, We've also talked about using De Bruijn graphs. And when we use De Bruijn graphs, the way we do that is we actually use kamas to make the De Bruijn graph. We also may want to do, for example, error correction on next generation sequence data. So for example, if I'm sequencing my genome, and I sequence my genome to a thousand-fold coverage, if I find a read once, that's probably a mistake in the sequence. And those little errors cause huge problems, for example, for doing assembly, for doing mapping, for doing anything like that. So one of the ways that we do error correction is by counting kamas in the sequence and looking at the underrepresented kamas. Those underrepresented kamas probably represent errors in the sequence, and we can remove them before we do any sequence analysis. Another approach that people use a lot is what's called digital normalization. And the idea here is if we're doing a technique where we're trying to count things, for example, RNA-seq analysis, if we have really big extremes where we have maybe one gene or a few genes that are super abundant, then we probably want to use digital normalization to just kind of remove the top peak of those, that, those reads. Make everything kind of about the same. It really helps with kind of the statistics, some of the analysis. It also helps when we're doing genome assembly if we remove those highly repetitive regions and it stops breaking the genome assembler. In my group and in lots of other work that people have done, We've used came accounts to analyze metagenomics data. We can very quickly count kamas, and we can use the kamas as basically a proxy for the organisms that are in the sample. For example, my group published a paper called on a tool called Focus, which will take a random data set, will count the kamas in it very quickly, and will use that to identify the organisms that are there. We also published a tool called real-time metagenomics where we take protein kamas rather than DNA kamas and we use that to identify the functions that are present in the metagenomic sample. And then another goal of counting kamas, another thing we may want to do, is to search through large data sets. And so for example, if we wanted to search through all of the sequence read archive, one of the ways that we could do that is we could identify specific kamas that we're looking for or counts of kamas in specific samples and then go and see which ones are present. So there are many reasons why we want to count kamas. The question is, how can we do that efficiently?